Hey everyone, Flo from Off to Lens Z, and today's video is about the Temba Cinelux shoulder bag. I will talk about how this one is different from other camera bags, how I use it, why I decided to get one in the first place, as well as what I like and don't like about it. I will also show you different types of kits that you can carry in this bag, and there's also a discount code for you guys, so be sure to watch the video and check out the link in the description. As always, before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. So I've been using Temba products for years now, especially their pouches and accessories, and I always love the quality and how useful they are. But to be completely honest with you, I had never used their backpacks or camera bags until recently. During one of my recent shoots, my friend Thomas brought with him his Tinelux backpack, and I was very impressed by it. So much that the day after, I bought a very similar one. I love when I get a product in a genuine way, and not one that is hyped or that is brand new or sent to me for review, because I know that I truly like it and need it. Now disclaimer, Temba is sponsoring this video, but this is a bit different for this color because I actually contacted them after buying and using the product. I never intended to make a review, but the more I started using it, and the more I thought I should actually share this on the channel because I think this is a very useful piece of equipment and not necessarily what filmmakers are thinking when they think about camera bags. And as always, these are my own opinions and I do not get to modify the content of this video. As you know, I already own quite a few camera bags, so you might be thinking, why would I get another one? This isn't a standard camera bag. This is a doctor style camera bag, and I will explain this in depth a little bit later. Essentially for me, this bridges the gap between a traditional camera bag and a Pelican case. As I shoot a lot of documentary and outdoor content, as well as YouTube videos, I always need to move from one location to the other, and usually I need to do it fast. Being able to carry my whole kit built as is from one place to the other is amazing. Not having to build a kit on location, and most importantly, not having to take it apart can save a huge amount of time. This is of course very useful for documentary style, like I said, but pretty much for anything else as well. Personally, I also shoot a lot by myself or with just one other person, and most of the time it is by car. Having this bag now means that I can actually store my whole kit in the car and I don't have to worry about strapping into the back seat or giving it to someone if I'm driving, for example. So I can actually build my kit at home, put it in the bag, either the day before or in the morning, then put the bag in my car, and all I have to do, all I have to worry about on location, is to pick up the camera and start shooting. When I'm done, I can just put the whole kit back in a bag, and then just go home, and when I will have time, then I can take it apart. So I can actually maximize my whole shooting time, where I don't need to get that early, where I don't need to account for like half an hour at the end of the shoot. For someone like me, for example, that lives in the mountains, in winter, the less time you spend outside, the better. Now let's get into the actual bag. The one that I got is a shoulder bag 21 high top. You can also get it in 16, 21 regular, and 24. The one that I have is a shoulder version, but you can also get the Cinelux bags as roller bags or backpacks. The reason that I got the high top version is that I knew that the 6K Pro, which is my main camera with the top handle, is quite a tall kit, so I needed as much height as I could. This particular one, for example, can fit camera rigs up to 17 inches long or 43 centimeters, and the inside height is about 12 inches or 30 centimeters. I really recommend measuring your actual physical kit just to have an idea what bag would suit you best. As I said before, it has a fast doctor bag opening, which is the best feature for me. It has an extra wide opening, so you can actually quickly access your gear through only one zipper down in the middle. This means that you can actually have your camera with the best plate or top handle or even a mag box. Plus, it's strangely satisfying for some reason to open and close. This bag also has what they're called flex core dividers. They are made with aluminum reinforcement, so this makes them both rigid and flexible, so you can shape them to suit your needs. They can be used to secure your gear, for example, or separate your camera from your lenses. Personally, I use them to create sections depending on the kit that I use. When you buy this bag, you also get a protective zippered patch and soft padded wraps. These are to protect lenses and delicate accessories and allow them to be safely stored alongside your camera rig. This allows you to maximize the interior storage space. And the great thing about these is you can actually use them outside of the bag. They don't need to be in the bag. You can actually use them to protect items during your travels or whatever you want. So I think they're very useful and it's a nice plus. And you also get a couple of lens dividers that actually fold on the top so you can actually secure your lenses. The bag also features three pockets on the side and the larger one features different compartments for all sorts of smaller accessories like cables or plates, tools, whatever you need on that day. 
Essentially, you can pack quite a lot. And they even added a luggage pass-through at the back. And lastly, the bag is very durable and weather resistant. And it also features super strong YKK zippers and heavily reinforced stitching. Now, what I want to show you is a few examples of what you can actually fit in a bag, depending on the kit that you use. Obviously, keep in mind these are my own rigs, they might be different than yours. So I just wanted to give you an idea from a very basic kit to a full-on cinema one. Kit one, BMPCC 6K Pro, Canon Zoom. One camera, one lens. This is a smaller kit and a very standard one. There's no follow focus, there's no matte box, it's very run and gun. As you can see, you have loads of room left. It allows you to put the kit sideways and it leaves quite a bit of room for other lenses and accessories. You can use the dividers to create bigger sections and you could actually put two bodies if you needed to. Kit 2, 6K Pro, Cine Prime Kit. One camera, one cine lens, one matte box, one follow focus. This kit is starting to get quite big, but it still fits in that main compartment that I build even with a matte box. And you can use that end section to fit more lenses or anything else that you want if you happen to have a hard case for your prime lenses aside. Kit 3, 6K Pro Cine Zoom Kit. One camera, two cine zooms, one follow focus, one matte box. This kit is pretty much as big as you want to go with a 6K Pro handheld. Even though these DZO picture zooms are quite long and bulky, they still fit great. You can have one on a camera and the other standing up in a corner. A lot of people actually use these bags as is with no sections whatsoever, so they're able to fit a large kit. So this can be useful, for example, if you have a 6K Pro like me or a regular 6K and the battery pack sits at the back of it on rails. Speaking of battery packs, if you are in the same configuration as me using a battery pack at the bottom of the camera, like the Core SWX or the Anton one, it will still actually fit in a 21 high top, the one that I have, even with a top handle attached. One thing that I want to mention though, if you are using a small HD monitor and you prefer to use the arm like I do, the kit is still too high to close the bag as the 6K Pro is such a tall camera and I prefer to store the monitor aside. If you do intend to fit your whole kit with a monitor and handle, then I suggest to get a swivel mount like this one from Small Rig. That way the monitor is aligned with the handle and it fits without a problem. And as always, all the gear mentioned in this video will be listed below. First of all, I like the quality. This bag is really well made, super sturdy and very well padded which is very important when you're going to be using this bag to carry and protect a $5,000, $10,000 or even $15,000 kit. The bottom also has rubber pads so it doesn't move around. The strap is very thick and comfortable and the same goes for the top handles. The most important thing for me is that this bag saves me time whilst protecting my gear. And no matter what types of shooting you're doing, time is always crucial. Next is the doctor style opening. I love that system and it's not something that I really thought about up until I actually used it and now I find it very hard to go back to a traditional camera bag. This style is so handy and super quick not only to access your gear but also to have a glance at your whole content. Next, I like that this bag is a filmmaker's bag. And when you really think about it, most of us as freelance filmmakers always use camera bags that are intended or targeted at photographers. And there's nothing wrong with that. Most of my bags are like that, but it's really nice to have one that is built around a video kit with the appropriate shape and length. For example, you also get a security camera strap at the bottom of the bag to secure your kit so it doesn't move around and you also have a little lens pillow in case you are using a long lens. Then I love the accessories that it came with, the pouch and the wraps. These items are actually ones that I would buy without the bag, so the fact that you actually get them with the bag makes for pretty good value. And lastly, I like the size of this one. For me, it's big enough to fit a cinema kit if you needed to, but it's also not overkill if you happen to have just a run and gun one. Plus, it fits really well in the boot of a car or in the back seats. And I think if you actually go for the 16 or the regular 21, you can actually use them as carry-on luggage. Now let's talk about the things that I don't like as much about this bag. Um, honestly, there's nothing that I don't like. As I said, this is a bag that I actually used and saw before buying it, so I knew exactly what I was getting and why. If I had to mention one thing though, I would say that the bag is on the heavy side. The shoulder strap is very comfortable, but the back itself is quite heavy at 3.9 kilos or 8.5 pounds. So when you add your kit inside, depending on which one you have, it starts to get quite a bit heavy. And for me, this is fine because I actually bought this to carry and store my whole kit uh, to go from one location to the other. 
However, if you are buying this as your main camera bag and you intend to do a lot of walking around, then I would definitely suggest to have a look at the backpack versions. Yes, I would definitely recommend the Cinelux shoulder bag and I really wish I knew of it before. I actually used an equivalent when I was in film school years ago but it was nowhere near as practical and useful as this one. I can see these bags being used as a main filmmaker's bag to carry pretty much everything that you need on set or location or to simply carry around and protect your entire camera rig. The ability to fit in and take out your fully rigged camera kit so quickly is very useful especially for solo filmmakers. This is a bag that I am and will be using for my documentary shoots, but also when I test lenses and cameras, as it makes transporting and shooting so much quicker. That's it for me for today guys, hopefully you found this video helpful, please give it a like if you did, and don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 10% off Tenba products. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Also feel free to check out my two ebooks, Freelance Documentary Filmmaking and Travel Cinematography, where you can find a streamlined but comprehensive overview from pre-production all the way to marketing, built on years of my own experience shooting short documentaries and travel videos around the world. And if you are interested, I'm also doing filmmaking mentoring sessions when you can ask me anything about a wide variety of topics.